Marine debris is any man-made object found in the marine environment. Typically this is plastic, based on what I've seen. All roads lead to the ocean. So do all rivers, estuaries, lakes and streams. We might think of marine debris as an eyesore, but to marine wildlife... <laughs> It's a matter of life or death. My name is Erica Serino, and I'm a science writer investigating the issue of plastic pollution. I sailed from Los Angeles to Hawaii, to French Polynesia, around the northern coast of Iceland. Marine debris is everywhere. I can't even count the number of hours that I've spent cleaning the beach. My name is Bridget Klepinski, and I live in Rockaway Beach in New York City. If I did see it, I think it would have been very hard for me to believe how much is actually washing up almost every single day. Well, historically, Jamaica Bay has been considered the dumping ground for all of New York City. So it's really been an uphill battle. My name is Alexandra Kanonik, and I am the Jamaica Bay Program Manager for the Northeast Chapter of the American Littoral Society. The marine debris can wash in from land, from the surrounding communities, from storm drains, sewage treatment plants, from littering and illegal dumping. The types of things that we typically see are abandoned boats, jet skis, kayaks, the rug pots, and fishing line, and plastic bags. And we find a lot of plastic shovels and buckets and toys and plastic bottle caps, shoes, sunglasses, all sorts of things. It really makes you think about the impact that we have and how the things that we consume affect a much larger web of life. It impacts public health, it impacts the wildlife, it impacts the vegetation, which all the wildlife depends on. Over 90% of all seabirds have plastic in their stomachs, and the average person eats more than 50,000 plastic particles every year. Plastic is a super useful material. It keeps everything clean, watertight, it's very sterile. But unlike other natural materials, it never ever disappears. It only gets broken down into smaller and smaller pieces, spreading these poisons throughout our environment, in our food, in our water. You may think to yourself that you're not part of this problem, but none of us are immune to plastic, and also all of us use plastic. Despite just having 4% of the world's population, the United States produces more plastic waste than any other country in the world. This past year alone, we have produced more than 75 billion tons of plastic, and only 8% of all that plastic has ever been recycled. Last year, the Jamaica Bay Rockaway Parks Conservancy cleaned more than 10 tons of trash off of our beaches, but every year it just keeps coming back. Because while some is littered or dumped there, most of it washes up from offshore. Beach cleanups are a phenomenal way to remove immediate danger for wildlife, but unfortunately, until we address the root cause of the problem, we will keep seeing these beaches covered with plastic, you know, week after week, month after month. Even though recycling is a start, Using less and finding better options really has to be the answer. The movement that's happening now with kids actually speaking out for climate justice and all these environmental issues that the adults are creating, yeah, that gives me hope. All over the world, there are more and more movements springing up to reduce plastic use or to encourage zero waste. There are companies coming up with all kinds of algae-based products, fungi-based products, bioplastic, there are different legislations popping up to force companies to redesign and rethink. No matter how small it may seem, taking any step to reduce your plastic use is a positive one. We don't give ourselves enough credit for being ingenious and creating our own solutions to problems. <laughs>